people don't really know that much of how to maintain nature. That's something I'm really learning myself as well. Doing some gardening with a friend and I'm also volunteering in some permaculture project. Uh, and so I'm learning to like, plant life, you know, and start from scratch and really learn about how nature works because there's not something really more, for me, more interesting to learn. Like I'm fascinated how humans work because they astonish me. But uh, yeah, like nature and, and, and humans are some mysteries to unravel. A lot of people, they don't really see it as a mystery because they're focused on like the exterior. You know, like they don't see the forest for the trees, you know. They see the different leaves, the different trees, but not a functioning whole. Like how holistically it's all symbiotically like works together to create this outcome and there's a certain set of balance and if this balance is not maintained by us humans and also by other creatures but that's a very big topic then yes it will just, well it wouldn't go away completely I'm sure because it's a re, uh, regenerative uh, entity but I'm really stepping in, into the high, uh, you know, what's called the Gaia hypothesis. That everything is alive, everything is intelligent. And we're not really able to sense this intelligence straight off the bat. And we really have to, like, build this relationship, you know. And this is something that permaculture does, but not just permaculture. It's just another term that people use for a certain practice that is really amazing. But, uh, you can look at the plant physically, you know. I could connect with these plants. We all can. Because they're us, in a certain sense. And so, yeah, like I'm talking about animism, you know. Which, inside in detrimental... Def in, in psychology. Detrimental? Developmental psychology, yes. Um... It's uh, one of the stages when a child has an oceanic feeling that it feels one with everything. And that's like the, that's a, that's a core truth, man. But uh, it's even not even that words because it's not describable. But uh, to, to those people that have those types of experience, well, they will know what I was, I'm speaking about. But it it's, uh, has to do with your hemispheres. Like your left hemisphere uh, sees more of the analytics, or it sees a certain bird flying there. But the uh, right hemisphere knows more of the context. And I, what I'm speaking about there is everything is connected. It's the context. It's like being able to recognize patterns, not create patterns that are like delusional patterns, but patterns that you can really validate by living your own life and seeing correlations between certain events. And this is some deep stuff. This is this is deep stuff, and this is what I'm saying with the metaphysics. So that it's, uh, you could call it animism, but it, the ism creates another schism. But and you could call it monism, like everything is one. But it's uh, it's more complicated than that. There's some certain manifold of the pluralism where there's this freeity, freeityism, diversityism. Let's say. And so, yeah, we don't experience it like that. And we make, often make things obsolete, you know, like we can say animism is obsolete, monomism is obsolete, manifold is obsolete. But these are not obsolete terms. Like, to, to say the truth, you have to be silent. Whew. I don't know if people will catch that, but... Or you can say, to say the truth, you can point out the truth, but the truth is in between the words. What about that one? Because uh, the truth is ever present. So more of a question of realizing it. You're realizing it, that it's there. Because we, uh, we look around it. We look everywhere, but not there. We uh, create all these uh, abstractions and delusions and different philosophies that, like I said, make certain things obsolete or oversimplify things. Uh, but there's always a set of a mystery, you know. But 
that's why I would, you know, I'm, I am that I am. I cannot frame myself in any certain manner. So when people could call me monist or atomist or whatever, but I never say like, I am this. Well, I probably do, but I should be more aware that I'm not doing that. Because uh, I'm not a monist, I'm not vegan, even though I follow vegan diet, mostly. Let me do make some exceptions, I have to be honest about that. Perfect. But uh, I'm not saying like veganism is the only way or this is the way to truth. Because everything, every, everyone should find it out for themselves. But question this, what is truth? What is reality? <laughs> Where am I really? Know thyself, you know? This is a sentiment that was echoed by any philosopher. Oh, sorry. I missed my ass. That's why I saw something this day. <laughs> oh, man. So here you go. That's some, uh, some, some deep thoughts that I have. And I do have to share them. Some people that are ready to hear its message. And uh, yeah, like for the your essence. You know. It's about the journey, the search. Because that's something that I realized when I'm speaking about truth is the search is the truth. If you're really genuine about looking and finding things out, then things will follow your path, you know. Life becomes meaningful because meaning is all there is and all there isn't at the same time. It's only a matter of perceiving it. Yeah, and you could... Man, some people call me a relativist or something like that. But, like, there's a relative aspect to reality. But it's not obsolete. And... What is rea relativity, anyway? Like heard there's only two people that really understand it and that was Albert Einstein himself and uh, what was the other guy Albert North Whitehead also knew about relativism pretty well I don't know those people too deeply uh, but there's also a good chief with certain relativity but everything like I said everything is connected you know like if you can understand that like permaculture is not an answer to everything and even what I said before in this video is not an answer to any to, to everything these are all words and I can like put them like in a very logical narration where you can almost believe me but it's almost unbelievable creationists you only have to like directly know that it's there Nature is not is irreplaceable. You cannot recreate it with machines. You can attempt to. You can learn a great deal about animals as well and trying to make technology out of it. That's what they've been doing a lot. But technology has a simple implication, y'all. Putting something externally, like even psychedelics and stuff, or like forms of technology. Technology is a big, big topic, but but they don't. Yeah, like it's. We can go towards technology or we can go towards nature, you know, that's that's the prime thing. And yeah, about the permaculture, there's many things you can find online about permaculture. Uh, I'm still learning myself and it's pretty, pretty interesting and like pretty simple solutions that you can bring in. So yeah, you, everyone can use it. Uh, everyone should know about it. I think they should teach it in schools, to be honest. They should teach you to harvest your own food, to care for nature and... There, you're hitting, you're hitting meaning there already, you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, people can call me crazy, they can call you crazy, they can call everyone crazy, but they can call a lot of names, but they don't say anything. And like I showed you before, you can only show and not tell. That's that's what it comes down to, you know? Like uh, the, one of my first spiritual teachers were Michael Grubb, shout out to him. Uh, Astor Solson was now called Reprogram the Matrix and they showed me like online they were doing demonstrations 
like a psychokinesis, which a lot of people don't believe in, but they said you can test it yourself. And so I did. And I found out they were right. There's uh, more going on in our consciousness than we were led to believe. And it's actually mind over matter. So don't be scattered. Don't be scared. You know, be prepared. And that's what they were telling me as well. It's like just be prepared. Prepare for everything. Once you can do that, you can do anything. But you only have to live in service. We already talked about that as well uh, in a previous common solution. I'm thinking about like more of a collaboration because that's something I was trying to aim at. So I'm realizing, you know, I can do not. I had I had in the beginning some uh, guests, some interesting people, and yeah, I was uh, having co-hosts, you know, cheered. Uh, and later talk with some other people to come like co-host and I wanted to do it more like collaborative not just me doing it because uh, you end up with like step down from it I already knew because it was like you, know, you need a lot of motivation you know like you only have like 40 subs and you do put in a lot of energy into like those videos to edit them and like I like I like doing it Otherwise, I wouldn't do it, of course. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know if I'm a good interviewer or less you know, like a dialogue because I have too much to say. Uh, and so, yeah, this is some things I'm thinking about, like uh, in what format I want to proceed. And so I do also want to bring, bring out more of the local subs or the subscribers in my uh, on my channel to like become engaged in a certain way like for example uh, if they know certain guests that are interesting for the podcast or you know you have some creative outlets you want to show that but you know you can do that anywhere so you know you could say you don't need it but you don't need me and you do not but we do need each other that's the main thing like i don't want to have any of to my name to it death is a part of life it's pretty open broken and stuff but sorry for some people <laughs> who are kind of watch those types of things but it's it's part of life you know? like, uh, sorry for that little rabbit but uh yeah like his uh, body will be dissolved and it will become back to nature Recycle. And that's the main thing that, that permaculture is driving for. It's the cyclical nature of nature. Cyclical of nature. Cyclical principles of nature. Yeah. Something in the future. I do want to. Like my dream is like being able to love what I do. You know, like uh, research, share some of that that I've learned over the years. Went traveling a lot. Uh, yeah, like I do feel like I, I'm here to like help heal people, teach people self-healing. You can only have that with like certain clarity about your own life. And I'm still on a healing journey myself. And so I first need to learn to heal myself. And eventually I can heal others and heal nature and heal everything. Because something that I even encountered some people were like, Oh, do you have anything about healing? Which I was trying to do, even in the beginning, uh, to speak more on healing. But uh, yeah, like uh, like I still think it's very important. And first of all, with healing, you need to know who you are. So it's all about healing. Healing is becoming whole again. And so if you go into nature, you're already healing yourself because you're releasing uh, that hucha, heavy energy into sami light energy and uh just flowing let things go don't believe that you know who you are because you do not know like me i do not know who i truly am i am um, still figuring things out but i have some idea some estimation of what i could be like of what i am truly 
but I'm still able to surprise myself, you know what I'm saying? I have knowledge of myself, for sure, but it's always unfolding, like there's no end point to it, like it's a process, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So yeah, thank you for watching, I'm here in the forest, maybe, yes, camera, I'm here in the forest, thank you for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, and yeah, check it out if you want to take some previous, so I'm uh, one on one sessions with me. I'm available on pre apply, but I'm currently invisible on that platform. Uh, but if you let me know on the YouTube channel, we can figure things out. And overall, like there's still Discord, but uh, yeah, you can join that. And yes, yeah, see you tune in the next episode or something, or next podcast. We'll see. All right, peace.